You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another, another Let's Play episode of Fell. So, oh man, the last place we left off. Oh my God, this game is heavy right out the gate. Man, this comes right at you, both barrels blazing. Ooh, hits you right in the feels. But yeah, so his dad died. Uh, his dad died. It looks like most of the people in the village are probably dead. Um, yeah. Ugh, what is going on? But yeah, anyway, guys, let's please just sit back and enjoy. Let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right. 18 minutes and let's jump right in. Alarm changer up and let's go. Okay. Mm. Dad is fine. Is this my fault? No. How can I fix this? Try to move forward. D Dad? Mm-hmm. Can you tell me about how you found me? Hmm. I don't know, kid. He said, putting his arm around me as we sat in the cold October air. You said you'd tell me when I turned ten, right? I said, looking up at him expectantly, watching as his eyes stared off into the hopeful starry sky. Hmm. I suppose you're old enough now. Ten years old is nothing to sneeze at. He paused for a second, and a frown crossed his maw briefly before he continued. Uh, I must admit, there's not much to say. His head turned to me as he spoke, and silence hung in the air as his eyes met mine. There was something in them that I didn't recognize. Was it pain? Regret? Oh, chapter two. Okay. Darkness. Darkness in the whirlwind that is my mind. That's all there is. I can't quite get a full thought out for some reason. But someone, someone is holding me. Where? Where am I? Dad? Dad? I try to call out for him, but my ma shuts before I can finish. Shh, quiet down, it's okay. A voice whispers in my ear and I feel myself sway slightly. I try to move, but I can't make my body do what I want. I feel sick. Why? I feel... I... Before the thought can flourish, it fades into the darkness, and I soon and soon after I follow suit. Mm. <laughs> I feel so drained, so cold. My eyes open, and I land and land on the canopy of trees above. The warm colors of their leaves feel almost chilling in the night light, but even still, they're as beautiful as ever. Leaves, L leaves? Wait, d d huh? I try to call out, but my ma just tightens. My jaw just tightens, and my mouth closes before the word can conclude. Shh! A whisper hits my ears once again, and I roll onto my side to get a better sense of what's going on, though it takes way more effort than it should. It feels like I'm swimming in honey. Oh, God. B what? Oh, Gods! Yeah! Oh, Gods! Mm! I try to scream at my mind, but my jaw stays locked shut. What the fuck is that thing? My eyes shut tight and my breathing quickens. It's just a dream. Yeah, 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 you're dreaming, Wes. Wake up! I try to convince myself that this is just a new nightmare, and I try to tell myself that, that when I poke my eyes, every, that when I open my eyes, everything is going to be okay. But every millisecond that passes, I'm reminded of how real the grass I'm laying in feels. As I turmoil, something touches me. A paw lands on my shoulder. Hey, it's okay. We're here to help. Oh. Oh, hello, handsome. My eyes open after the voice trails off, and I'm greeted with... A dog? A, a wolf? His half-hearted smile slowly morphs into a frown as he looks at me. You alright? You're shaking. I stare into its... It, no, his eyes, and before I know it, my fight-or-flight instincts kicks in and my paw shoots forward to try and push him away. He catches both before they make contact and pushes me onto my back. My paws clench into fists as I strain to wrestle control of them from him. His expression shifts to a more serious one, his grip tightening slightly on my wrists. I grunt from the struggle and try to roll him over, only for him to overpower me and pin both my paws on either side of my head. I gaze up at him with a glare of defiance, but pause when I see his fearful expression. Every inclination to fight back ceases as we stare into each other's gazes for several long breaths. With a sigh, he releases my paws and rises to his feet, arms outstretched. Listen, let's just start over, okay? I'm Marsh, and I'm really trying to help you here. The wolf whispers as I catch my breath and try to calm down. I'm... I'm Wesley. I say warily, accepting his, warily accepting his as I get up to my own, to my feet, pause. Listen, I just, I need to get back to my dad. Something happened and, wait, 
I can't remember what happened. No, it's not safe there. Am I gonna let you get yourself killed? The words he says makes my stomach churn. Killed? I try to wrap my mind around the idea that going home could get me killed, but it just leaves me frustrated and confused. Uh, my head isn't working right. None of this makes any sense. I just... I try to say something, but I don't know what I was, what I want to say. After a few moments of quiet, the wolf breaks the silence. Listen, we can talk all you want, just not here. His head whips around and his ears twitch before he continues. It's not safe. Let's at least get a bit deeper into the woods. I stand still and look off into the brush silently, just trying to understand what's going on. I was going home. Home. What happened? The thought gets interrupted as the wolf speaks again. Come on. And try to be quiet. Like I said, I really don't want you to get killed. I suddenly feel something wrap around my wrist, and I look deeper to see the and I look down to see the wolf. Marsh's paw around my wrist, pulling me off deeper into the woods. What in the world is going on? Killed? Why would I get killed? It, it makes no sense. There's nothing dangerous about. First stands on in, and Marsh Marsh's gate halts as a crunch sounds out from somewhere. Our head whips around to the source of the noise within the brush to the right. Eventually, I let out a sigh of relief as a bunny emerges, scurrying off deeper into the woods. H hey. Before I can finish, Marsh whispers out, his tone more hushed than before. Follow where I walk, okay? Just Let's just go for a while, and then we can rest and talk. Once again, I want to retort, but for some reason, I don't. Oh. Instead, I look down and follow his lead almost exactly without protest, dodging the random leaves and twigs that lie on the forest floor as we go. Slowly, I manage to get lost in the, re in the repetitive movement, and I take the time to try and run through, run through things in my head again. Arrow and I were out, out at the well, and I fell asleep. And then I went home and... I can't remember what happened next. Uh, come on, think, Wes. My heart skips a beat as the fog in my head begins to clear. Sparks of embers dance in front of my eyes in recollection. Dewhurst was on fire, and Dad... Oh, God, it's Dad. Last time I saw him. The, the, the last time. My legs stop, and all I can do is stare down at them as I think. This looks like a fine place to stop. we put a good di bit of distance between us and... I need to get home now. I interrupt with a tiny yet affirmative voice, but the wolf just frowns at me. No, he says in an equally small voice, but one that trumps mine in authority. Let's just sit and talk, okay? We don't have time. My dad needs help. I choke on my own words for a moment and realize that I can't breathe. I look down and try to console myself. Come on, Wes, breathe. It's going to be okay. He's hurt, and he needs my help. I finish, looking back up at him, waiting for him to realize he needs to lead me back home. But as I stare at him, his frown grows more intense, and I see something in his eyes that I recognize. Regret. Your dad. He was the ram you were laying next to, right? The question hangs, and I feel my breathing pick up. I try to swallow, but I can't, but I just can't. There's a deep silence between us, only broken by the sounds of the forest. I look deep into the wolf's eyes, pleading for something, but I don't even know what for. I'm sorry. No. I tried to help. I really did, but it was too late. No. We just, we need to get back and we can... My voice breaks and I stumble over my words again as I stare into his eyes, watching that regret seep out. There's, there's nothing back there, Wesley. No, no! Without even realizing it, I'm on my paws and knees. The edges of my vision fog up as I fight to hold back the crushing feeling threatening to erupt from my chest. I lose this fight, however, and an unrecognizable sound escapes my lips that causes Marsh to flinch nearby. As I fight to breathe, my claws dig deep into the soft soil that my knees begin to sink into. When I look down at them, my eyes widen at the dried blood coating my paw wraps. Max's final moments flash before my eyes with my desperate attempts to stop the bleeding, to keep him here with me. This isn't happening. It, it, it just isn't happening. He was fine this morning when I woke up. We had breakfast together. Did the morning harvest and we were going to share my first drink. That can't be gone. Not now. Not before I had the chance to... I'm never going to see a smile again. His head peeking up from the hatch to make sure I'm okay. No more of his breakfasts, lunches, or dinners. No more sitting outside the house and watching the sunset. No more Mac. Tears splash down on the dirt beneath me as they flow f freely from my eyes. Some of the trail under my mask to freely fall down my chin. Every staggering breath I take gets caught at my throat with no hope to escape. I squeeze my eyes shut and struggle to recall our final moments together, feeling the growing coldness of his fingertips pressing to my face underneath the mask. One last thing, one last loving look before the light left his eyes completely. 
One of my dirt-filled paws loosens its grip on the earth and rises to clutch the left side of my chest as if to keep it from exploding. This is my fault. This is all my fault. If I hadn't taken so long to get home, we could have left sooner. I got so distracted with Arrow that... Arrow! What happened to Arrow? I was supposed to meet him, but then all this happened. Did he make it out? Had he left already by the time all this happened? Or had he still been waiting for me to make a choice? What about Ash? Last I knew she was at home taking a nap. Her home was engulfed in flames with Dewhurst. Was she still asleep when this happened? Everyone I know, everyone I care about, they're all gone. My home is gone. My friends are gone. My family is gone. The tightening feeling in my chest persists to the point that I feel the world sway underneath me. Only strangled gas managed to, managed to make it out of my muzzle in my continued effort to breathe. I can only blink out tears as I stare down at the grassy earth beneath me, unable to look anywhere else. Doing anything feels like an impossible task. I'm only faintly aware of the slightest twitch in my ears, the rushing of the water as it flows on without a care to the tragedy that befell my home. I'm all alone. It's just me. What am I going to do now? There's nothing left for me. How am I supposed to go on without any of them? Something warm presses against my back that causes me to go more rigid than I already am. Though I know who it is, I don't respond, not seeing the point in saying anything. After a few moments, Marsh speaks up. Hey, I, I, I can't imagine... He trails off after that, and silence falls between us once more. Only the whispering wind blowing between us disturbs the growing emptiness. He withdraws his paws away from with a sigh. Do you want to talk about it? I don't want to do or be anything right now, so I opt to say nothing at all. That's answer enough. All right. The wolf crouches down to, to take a seat in the dirt next to me in silence. I don't pay him any mind. There's just no point in going on anymore. Not a thing to look forward to when all your happiness lies behind you. We say like this for enough time that the feeling in my arms and legs returns with a stiff and dull ache. My arms in particular start to shake from the weight of holding myself up for as long as I have. Soon the ache turns into a growing twinge that forces me to finally sit up onto my heels to give them relief. Marsh is staring at me with a neutral expression that doesn't ask anything of me. I stare back at him while I reach under my mask to wipe away any remaining tears from my wet, fur from my wet face fur. I don't want to talk about it. You don't have to. Okay. We sit with each other in silence under the dim moonlight for another stretch, an occasional leaf blowing by to catch our attention. We do need to get away from here, though. I barely give him a passing glance. Why? Because the ones that did this are still nearby and we need to get someplace safe. Whatever happens now doesn't change what's already happened. There's just nothing more of value to lose. You can... you can go on without me. Marsh gives a small start and shakes his head, a resolute look in his soft gaze. That's... No, I'm not leaving without you. Why? Marsh starts to say something, then stops himself before getting a single word out. He glances off towards something unseen in the woods behind us, behind us, then is back to me. Look, I know it feels like there's no reason to go on, but just come with me for now. Figure out what to do next, even if it ends up being nothing at all. Maybe we can figure it out together. What is there to figure out? Everything I had is gone! What am I supposed to do now? There's no one to turn to or go back to. Whatever I do now will be without the ones I held closest to me. I know, and right now you probably don't want to do anything except wait for your fate. But sometimes you just gotta keep moving, even if it's just getting up and walking. I glance back at the indentations in the dirt bay made by my paws. After a few moments, a little ladybug peeks out and catches my gaze. I watch it as it burrows from within the dirt, slowly making its way out, fighting to get out of the deep trenches I made. Eventually succeeding in crawling away into the unbothered blades of grass, vanishing into the night. Just keeps moving, huh? Sounds so much more easily said than done, like most things, I guess. Another hard decision is presented to me, and everything in me tells me to stay put and wait for the end. But that isn't something worth waiting for. One. Two. Three. I mouth to myself, and despite seeing no point, I rise to my feet with a low grunt before looking down at my paws once again. I stare at the bloody paw wraps and grimace, ripping them off and stuffing them into my pocket without even thinking about them anymore. Marsh gives me the smallest of thankful smiles, standing as well and taking a few steps toward a determined direction. My home isn't too far from here. If we go now, we can easily make it before sunrise. I only nod in response, which seems to be good enough for the wolf for now. He gestures for me to follow his lead as he begins heading deeper into the dense wood below the wood ahead of us. I stand there for a few seconds, before following his stride without any further protest. Looking around, there's no indication in the path ahead as to, how, as to where we're going, only that we're following the opposite flow of the stream. 
I focus on its steady flow to my right, letting myself get lost in its rhythm, just trying not to think at all. Instead, letting its rhythmic sloshing carry me for carrying me. I've been here before, years ago, back when I was much younger and things were a lot easier. Arrow and I, we came here together to go exploring. It took a lot of convincing from our fathers to let us go out alone again. This time, we'd left little markers for ourselves. I can still see the faintest trace of them here and there. It felt like a huge adventure, even though we were just retracing the path that... That Mac... That, that Mac laid out for us. It was my first time around a body of water that wasn't attached to the ocean. What surprised me at the time was how much more fe pleasant it was to swim in and how gentle it was. Not having to feel the sting of salt water against my eyes as Arrow guided me through the delicate stream, not having to fight waves as we played. Feeling sunshine through the treetops as we laid on the riverbank, exhausted from playing. It was perfect. We were there from sunup till sundown, just laughing together and enjoying each other's company away from the rest of the world. It was one of the most fun days of my entire life. I never wanted to forget it, so the first thing I did when we got back was draw the very landscape where we'd had, where we'd had the time of our lives. That way I'd be able to see it every day, just a glance away, hanging on the wall of my room. And here I am again, in cold silence. No laughter, no arrow, no mac. The same stabbing pain aches in my chest as one memory leads to another in a chain which is with seemingly no end. I'm doing it again. Thinking about anything is too much. Everything is tied to the ones who aren't here anymore. I know I should try to think about something else, or nothing at all, but even so, my mind keeps wandering to them anyway, with questions I have no hope of answering. One thought dominates them all, however, and it's the sight of Dewhurst being consumed by flames. Seeing the only world that I ever knew crumble away into ash. Destroying something is so much easier than putting something together. It's the same with building bonds versus being cut loose from them. All it takes is one terrible night. Who could have even done this? And why? There's no reason to put a small town that the kingdom forgot about to flame. Marsh begins to speak again, and I decide focusing on him would be better than focusing on this. So, what's up with that skull thing? He asks, continuing, continuing his pace between the trees. As I look up, I study the wolf's body. His frame feels almost stiff as it moves, like a dry twig about to snap. Uh, why does it matter? I answer almost in a growl, which shocks me a bit. I didn't realize how mad that question had made me until I was already speaking. No reason, it just looks cool, and I was wondering where you got it. I don't know. Dad says... I pause, stumbling over my words and stumbling literally. A shiver runs down me as I correct my stride and attempt to correct the mistake I had made. My dad always said he, uh, he found me in it. I stare forward again, thinking about the day he told me and the look in his eyes as he did so. They seemed apprehensive, troubled even. He had to have been dreading the idea of telling me. He was always overprotective, but I didn't care. He was always more than enough. I only wish I could have told him that. I shake my head and look back up to the wolf, whose shoulders seemed to slack a little at my answer, like he was holding his breath for those few moments. His tail follows suit, its movements loosening into a slow sway. I start to wonder what could have made him a, made him have a reaction like that, but again, before I can get too far into the thought, the wolf stops. The wolf stops walking, turns back towards me and speaks. Wait, what did you mean by found you in it? I really, really don't want to talk about this, okay? Oh, yeah, of course, please forgive me. You can ask me stuff instead if you want, he offers, turning away and continuing. The pause lingers as I get back into a groove of following where he steps, flowing through the woods just like the stream to our right. My eyes drift up from the wolf's feet to a feet pause to his ears and back down again as I try to think of a question. Something catches my eye, though, and I feel another ache in my chest. I, is that my satchel? Alright. Alright, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Mm, mm, this guy is really interesting. Ugh, he's cute. Oh, well. <laughs> Mr. Mosh. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!